Hello, Drag Racers. I'm Ross. And I'm Maddox. And for all of Season 4 of RuPaul's Drag Race, we will be bringing you our weekly updates on our top three moments from every episode, our favorite shade moment of the week, our favorite queen of the week, our favorite costume on the runway, and our predictions for next week. So stay tuned. What do you want? What's the tea? Tell me what's the tea? What's the tea? So, uh, what was your first favorite moment of the week? My first favorite moment of the week was Latrice Royale as the security guard during their mini challenge. It was just hilarious. She came on at first and she was kind of standoffish and then the guy was just like, take it to the next level. And she just kept saying, well since I've been in jail <laughs> and I've seen how the guards act and was it Willem called her um, Bernie Mac in a dress? She, she yeah. She stole the scene, and she's probably one of the reasons why their team won. Mm -hmm. So that was a good moment. Agreed. In fact, that was my first moment as well. Um, <laughs> oh, we should have discussed this. Uh, probably. <laughs> um, but I actually wrote down, the tables have turned, baby. Because Latrice just totally, and she won the challenge, and she deserved it. That little, like, ten-time neck clocking thing. <laughs> Amazing. And yes, I would watch Latrice get those nuts out of my face every <laughs> Monday at 10.30 after I talked. Yes. Coming to you this summer. She was a great actress. It was think. amazing. So she, that was definitely my first favorite moment. We agree. My second favorite moment was the Fifi and Sharon bite. And that's because they were in the workroom and last week on the runway, while Fifi was safe, Sharon was on the runway and she kind of threw Fifi under the bus saying how she did her spooky character because Fifi put her in that position. and But then she ended up winning, so when she came back to the workroom, she was just like, oh, I just wanted to let you know before any other girls start gossiping. And Fifi was not having any parts of that. She was just like, girl, why are you so upset that I told you to do your spooky look? You're good at it. You obviously won. So how, why are you mad about it? Like, girl, go back to Party City. It was a good argument, and both of them had good points, but I was kind of on Fifi's side, only because it was just like, girl, what are you so upset about? Like, you won the challenge, and I told you to do something that you always do. And not that, well, Fifi, I don't agree that that's the only thing that Sharon can do, but it's something that she does frequently. So, if someone tells you to do something that you frequently do, you should be doing it well, and you did, and you won, so why are you mad? Team Sharon Needles. That's Whatever. all I'll say about that. Why um, is she mad? It's so stupid. My second favorite moment was that's Max Vuchnik. That's name is a lot of M's. Yeah. Um, when Max was telling Madame Laqueer. <laughs> Madame Laqueer. <laughs> she's like already gone from my memory. When he was like, do that more like Lucille Ball, you know? Ooh. And she goes, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> like, I was dying. That was the yeah, like Tatiana was really funny. RuPaul thank you thank moment. You. I thank have you. one thing to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was that that was that <laughs> moment for this season and yeah. as it was happening I got so excited just thinking about it. It wasn't just like do it and then she obviously she did even if she didn't know who Lucio Ball was, which he probably, demonstrated it. He was like <laughs> Ooh, and she was like <laughs> in her fake British Russian accent, no one knows what she's doing. My third favorite moment is Mer Michelle Versage reading Tita Ritz on the runway. Because they were supposed to do like a glam red carpet look. Tita Ritz comes out in this sparkly dress that has like a little belt and spaghetti straps above the knee. And her legs are ashy, her hair is nappy, and she looks a hot damn mess. And, like, she does every runway. Which is so different for her. And then Michelle was just like, girl, if you're going to wear all these short costumes, you need to put lotion on your legs. Like, you look ashy. And then backstage, she's like, I don't look ashy, I put on bronzer. No, bitch. You <laughs> cannot put on makeup without moisturizing first. Because then you're just putting makeup on dry, flaky skin which does not make it any less dry or flaky. So, I loved that moment because Michelle let her know, like, girl, you've been doing this for, what, the past four weeks? 
and you become ashy and no, it's not the bronzer. It's your knees look like you were crawling in flour or something. My final moment uh, representing Team Sharon was when during Untucked she starts impersonating Kenya reading her lines. It reminds me of <laughs> high school <laughs> gym. And her impersonation was her. Was on point. On, it yeah. was amazing. And it just shows how much I love Sharon and how I think she can do no wrong. Obviously, you need to get off Sharon's nutsack. <clears throat> Team Sharon. <laughs> I love Sharon, but you take it to another level of love. My favorite shame moment yes. was during Untucked when we see uh, Team Latrice Royale. And everyone's like, you do big girl better than anyone. You come out looking great. You come out looking put together. Your makeup, your dress, you're amazing. And then the camera just pans and Jiggly's like, I'm sitting right here. <laughs> I can hear you. And everyone's like, mm -hmm, yeah, we know. Because uh, Jiggly's kind of a mess. And Latrice, and I say this more and more week after week, she just looks awesome. Especially this week with her blue, or everything. Her makeup She's looked amazing. Together, yeah. And she, she just looked great. My favorite shade moment was Milan and Madame Lequeer while they were practicing for the sitcom. Madame Queer somehow got in her head that she was doing a British accent and it sounded nothing like a British accent and Milan turns to her and goes, are you doing an accent? <laughs> and all of them were like, girl, it is not working. She continued to do that stupid accent and even the judges were like, you sound Russian or something. You don't even sound English because with her Puerto Rican accent and then her trying to do an English accent and barely knowing how to speak English, it's like, girl, don't, don't, just don't. Cole Sullivan, the judge, was like, I straight up thought she was a Russian girl. <laughs> like, I thought when she was going to talk, she was Russian. Like, that. that's not a successful accent. No. I think we have the same queen of the week. I think we do. Latrice. The Beast. <laughs> the Royale. Royale. Love. <laughs> I just love Latrice. Week after Every week. week I'm come, becoming more and more of a Latrice Royale fan. Mm -hmm. And this week, I was trying to look for another person to be my queen of the we week. Both were, we were like, we I was like, pick we Latrice. always pick Latrice or Sharon. <laughs> so I need a new girl. But she is just funny and she steals the moments. And she won the challenge this week and she deserved it. Seems like the only like genuine person on the show. She's not shady to anyone. She tells you like it is. And she's just. My favorite. She's my favorite. I, <laughs> I never would have thought she would have been my favorite. But I, she when was. I first saw her, I was like, oh, okay, the big girl. Like, yeah. all right. Usually and the then, big girls on this show, I'm just like... They're kind of, yeah, they have a lot to be desired. <laughs> yeah. But Latrice, every week, she surprises me more and more. She is hilarious. She's so genuine. Her and Chad Michaels are like the two that are like yeah. the actual, like the realest girls on there. But Latrice, every week, I'm just like, oh, I love her. Sometimes the older queens... They've been there, they've done that. They don't feel like they have anything to lose. It's just like, I have no reason to be shady to you. Whereas young girls here are all fighting for the same thing. So it's like, Argh! you have to choke each other out. Costume, my favorite was uh, Chad Michaels. She was giving me Florence oh, yeah. Welch. Real she good. good with the she looked amazing. Every time they cut her and untucked, they'd be like, oh my God, she looks so beautiful. I just, and she didn't get that much screen time this episode, which probably. No, she me. didn't. But yeah, she definitely stole it from me. I think her costume and her hair and her makeup, she looked beautiful. My costume of the week was Miss Fifi O'Hara. I loved her look. He does not like Fifi, so don't look at his face. <laughs> I loved her look this week. She came in like a strapless white feathered gown that touched the floor. She looked kidding. like no, a swan. <laughs> she looked beautiful, not a goose. She looked like a swan. Yeah. A beautiful swan. Her hair was in these big updo buns. Her makeup was flawless as usual. And she is a pageant queen. And pageant queens sometimes can rub you the wrong way. Because, I mean, I've been around some pageant queens and I'm just like, girl, I get it. Like, the updo, the dress, the makeup, the crystals, the long nails. Not every queen has to do that, but... When it's done, and it's done correctly, it is fierce. Yeah. So, Absolutely. she was my costume of the week. 
bottom two uh, was finally Madame Queer and, and the, Milan. Right. And I just knew Madame Queer was going to go home. Because the second it was like Madame Queer and Milan, I was like, mm, bye. Bye, Madame Queer. And, and I, and I, tw I tweeted about this, but I was, like, so excited to finally see her perform because I was like, maybe that's why she made it. Like, maybe her audition video was, like, her performing. I'm like, whoa, she performs really well. But no, like, Jiggly College. She's a point, <laughs> point of queen. She the just... second I see a drag queen performing, or even a, any performer, and they do this more than once, and it's not on the word you, <laughs> I'm like, okay. Court, like do do anything else. I'd rather you stand there and just hold the mic and give a performance than like, boom, me, us, everyone. This and they were performing Trouble by Pink. And trouble. <laughs> you're in trouble. trouble now. I'm gonna point to you because <laughs> you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Horrible. It was so stupid. Horrible. Milan turned it out. Mm -hmm. She sang her ass off. She s did a split, scooted across the stage. She swiffered with her taint, ribs. as Willem said. Yeah. She's swiffering with her taint. <laughs> Ripped her dress off. It was flawless. And I have to say, and this is no shade for Milan, because, like, I get it. You were going for it in trouble. It totally worked it. You were like, I'm a... But, like, yeah, you don't need to take your dress and wig off. That, when I well, see that... Well, yeah, I hate that, too. When I see that, I'm like, all right. I am that queen. I always say, listen, my hair has come off, regrettably, twice in my whole drag career. And it wasn't on purpose. But once it happened, I worked with it. Like, but it was not on purpose. I hate, and I've said this in videos before, I hate when that is a queen's stick. That is not shocking to me. That ruins the whole illusion. It's like if you go to Disneyland and you go to meet Mickey Mouse and you're taking a picture with him and he rips his head off. I don't want to see that. I want Mickey to be real and... If, is. if you're he a is. fucking <laughs> if you're a fucking drag queen and your illusion is like a female illusionist, you should not be ripping off your hair because girls don't walk around ripping their hair off. And it happens like way too much in this show. And like I okay, I get it. You're trying to like and like for the judges, they're like you know, the guest judges, that's their first time seeing it. They're yeah. like, ooh, yeah. so daring. But like every time I see it it gets more and more old and I'm just like but the one thing that was fierce about that is in the beginning when Trouble started, I don't know where she got it from, but Milan like pulled out black lipstick from somewhere. Oh, yeah, wait. And, I totally forgot to write that down. Started like she had on like a pink nudie kind of lip. <laughs> and then the song started and she instantly had black lipstick from somewhere. Her bra, her panties. I feel like I she was know. like what if I have to lip sync? I'm gonna turn it out. Black yeah. lipstick. And she had black lipstick. She put on her lip perfectly and then continued her lip sync, yeah. which was fierce. I totally forgot that. Yeah, I that was fierce. Talked about that. So obviously, Milan sent Madame LeQueer home. And she was in my predictions last week. She was in your predictions also. Every single. <laughs> Every Why single. is she on that show? Why was she on that show, thankfully? Well, she's gone now. And another thing about I, how I knew she was going to leave, because they were even talking about it backstage. Last week, she wore green, and they called her fungus. Yes. And then this week, she wore green again. And she's like, oh, if Michelle don't like green, that's not my problem. But if they told you last she's week, you do not you? look good in green, <laughs> and she's a judge, why would you wear green two weeks in a row? And her green dress didn't even fit her nice. It just looked like a big green satin sh sheet and she put like rhinestones and a bow on it. That's what it was. <laughs> okay. That's Weren't you watching? <laughs> so yeah, it was a hot damn mess and I'm glad Milan didn't go home even though I did not think she should have been in the bottom. No, she didn't just, well I think it was because Rue made the choice to just make the winning team safe but yeah. I feel like one of their, one of the per people on that team would have been in the bottom two. I don't think Milan deserved to be in the bottom two at no. all. For a second, I thought Kenya was going to be in the bottom because she kept... <laughs> and they were like, stop covering your face during the challenge. And she kept going. She's, like, a, she's so pretty, though. She like, is really pretty. She'll win all the awards for being the prettiest and the fishiest. And but yeah, every prettiest. year they have a really pretty one that doesn't really do anything. So it's next week, Snatch Game. Can't Snatch wait. Snatch Game. I can't wait Best for Best episode. So excited. Well, you know... Share. 
Chad Michaels <laughs> is going to turn that out because that's what she does for a living. Um, they kind of showed Milan being Diana Ross. Right. They showed uh, Snooki, Jiggly Caliente, doing her Snooki. I don't know how that's going to go. My bottom two next week, I'm predicting that Jiggly, because I just feel like, especially in this one, we've seen, like, she can't pull off a character. Yeah, she and she even said, off, she like, said, I can't pull off a character. I can't right. do that. So, so I kind of feel like, like for Snooki, she's just going to be like, mm, Jersey Shore. And <coughs> Kenya, because she can't speak English. <coughs> um... <laughs> So I feel like she, I don't, they didn't show what character she's being. Kenya and Jiggly are in the bottom two next week, hopefully. Well, I don't really, I like Jiggly, but I don't like Kenya, but um, unless, like we said, she does like a Spanish person. Right. Like, who could, she could do the J-Lo, but J-Lo's not really that funny. Ooh, she could do Nikki, I bet. Silence. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> I don't know, and they showed kind of a clip of what Sharon was doing, but I, I feel like tell. Sharon's Michelle Visage because she had that like hair that she always has, but I had no idea. So we'll see. I'm very excited for next week. I am, and um, you'll be hearing from us shortly after the episode. So, you will. Uh, <laughs> so and <laughs> so you will. So very excited for next week's snatch game. Yeah. So be sure to stay tuned and find, find out, out what's the what's tea. tea? <laughs> what do you want? Tea. Tell me what's the tea. What did they do? Uh, this will be by Natalie Cole. This will be an everlasting love. <laughs> Shantae, you stay. <laughs>